dad, these people have turned you into a liar. I have sent her approximately $330,000. This man has sent over $300,000 to his internet girlfriend. And I've got a list of the items that she's bought. And, you know, total is basically $4 million. I said, well, maybe I can help you with some of the stuff. And then I was able to. Alan's family is afraid that he will sell his vintage Porsche to get her back to the United States. What a beautiful car. In collaboration with our good friends at Trilogy Media, we're gonna work hard to free Alan from this terrible scam. Why were you chasing this fairy tale that you created in your head? Your whole family suffering. We'll even hunt down the man that he sent money to. You can't hide from us. We're still gonna find you. Evan? Why is he filming me? Stop filming my dad. Sorry, we'll get out of your way. Strap in seekers, this is a wild ride. Let's get into it. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So he's uh, under conservatorship uh, right now. He's still trying to go around them as much as he can. He's never seen this person. It's all been through text and through emails. He's still totally bought in. We're probably about 300K now. Um, the last thing that I saw, he started cashing in life insurance policies. So that was a new one as a way to get around, you know, all the other things that we closed down for him. Um, it's, it's, it's bad. Well, I'm retired and I volunteered down to World War, National World War I Museum here in Kansas City. So I was a platoon leader in a back automotive support company, assistant battalion adjutant. I go to church, go to, I attend church every Sunday and I volunteer for various things at church. I own a Porsche, so I go to Porsche club meetings. I got an old 71 911. The Porsche Club, we have a breakfast every Saturday morning at 7.30, and then every Wednesday afternoon, we have a lunch get-together. All right, now I don't, and, you know, I don't have a wife any longer. She got killed in a house fire six years ago, seven years ago, going on. But I was just trying to find somebody that I could have a relationship with. You know, I, like I say, I was married for 54 years, you know, so it's hard to find somebody to replace somebody that you've had that relationship that long with. Other than that, it's been pretty much on my own. Alan's wife passed away in a wildfire. The two were married for 54 years, but Alan's son, Sean, feels that his father moved on too quickly and didn't take enough time to grieve his mother's passing. I, I think he looks at relationships and women as widgets. This widget's gone, I need a new widget. I hate to say that, but I mean, my mom died six years ago. Two weeks after my mom was in the ground, my dad got involved in a scam. This is when Alan decided to open up a dating profile. I got onto several different things like Match. And this is when it all began. Alan was messaged by a woman named Lisa who instantly caught his eye. The first time she got in contact, she reached out to me. Said she liked what she saw and wanted me to send her some information about myself, you know. I told her about myself, you know, I was, had been married and my age and where I lived and her name is Lissa, 55 years old, I believe, 5'8", five, 5'10", five, something like that. You know, she's a brunette. She's very attractive. She was born in Germany. She was raised in England. She was a, a gemstone collector or, or a entrepreneur, I guess. She was buying gemstones and selling them, that type of thing and uh, flew to Malaysia, started looking around to buy things to bring them back for resale in the, in the US. Well, she seemed very, very friendly. She's always been very supportive of, of you know what I'm doing and she says that she would like to share that with me, basically. She was interested in me not, and not particularly the money that I had or anything along those lines. Said, I love you, Al. That's great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you do. And I would hope that I could love you once you got here also. I feel for her where she's at and the predicament she's in right now. Unfortunately, the situation she is, she can't get to the money that she's actually got because of the situation with her bank. I've seen her bank account. It's substantial. It's over two and a half million dollars that she's got in her bank account. Lisa's issues in Malaysia kept the two from ever meeting up in person. She needed to get access to her bank to get back to the United States. This is when the request for money kicked in. 
the first time she she asked about money from me, I think she had a, a an export license from U.S. basically, and they told her that that was not good in Asia, and she had to get an Asian export license because of her situation with her bank not being able to get the money out of her bank without her physically being there. Her bank is in Houston, and someone previously had tried to hack into her bank account. So she left the bank with the message that she had to be there in person to get any money out of there. She's got agents here in the States that I would send the money to who have accounts with uh, Chase, and I would send them the money, and they would put it through that account to get to her, basically. I have not sent any money directly to her. Allen began to send money whenever Lisa requested it. She did end up receiving the export license and sent a copy to Allen, but she needed even more money to move her furniture from Malaysia back to the United States. Basically, they've been conversations about her getting her purchases out of Malaysia. And I've got a list of the items that she's bought and you know, totals basically $4 million. I said, well, maybe I can help you with some of the stuff. And then I was able to. And then they said that she had to have insurance on her goods before they let her ship it out. And I think that was another 120000 something like that. I've sent her approximately $330,000. We've been talking about is getting her out of there. She's got enough money there to get out of Malaysia, except she can't get her bank to release the money. The money that Alan has sent to Lisa began to pile up. This is when his son, Sean, got involved. I really looked up to my dad for, you know, the example that he said about being truthful and doing things the right way and kind of just that. And, you know, he kind of came from a military background. So, again, just the way that he is behaving is so out of character for him. And it's, he's like, we don't know who this person is. My relationship with Sean is fairly strained. He has not allowed me to see my two granddaughters, which I'm not too happy about. And my main point with him is, Dad, these people have turned you into a liar. Like, he lies to everybody about everything now. It's really none of his concern. My money is my money. I've tried to obviously talk all reason with him, like, hey, let's, this person says that they're in Kuala Lumpur. And I said, Dad, buy us two tickets. I'll fly over there with you. You take out a million dollar check, as long as you hand it to a real person, more power to you. He won't do it. Well, Lisa has the opinion that it, really it's it's my life and it's my money and shouldn't be that much of a concern for Sean. Or I'd like, let's hire an import export attorney so that we can get this person over here and get them out of their situation that they're in, that they're constantly in, and he won't do it. If I can get the money to get her out of there, you know, I'll be more than happy to do it. And I think that once she got here and Sean knows that she's real, I think we could, you know, develop a, a livable relationship. This money is gone. You're not going to get back any of this money. The dynamic between Alan and Sean took a rapid downturn when Sean gained control over his father's finances through a conservatorship. I feel like a, a teenager as far as this conservatorship. I have to ask him to pay my bills. I have to ask him for an allowance. I have to provide him nickel and dime information with receipts. It's, it's a bunch of crap. If you want to spend your money, great. Spend your money. Go out and buy a new car. Go on a whirlwind tour for a year. And, you know, we don't care if you spend your money. We don't want you to be defrauded out of your money. As far as I'm concerned, a, a conservatorship is a bunch of bullshit. She's always said that, you know, that if, if I can get out of here, you'll have your money back as soon as I'm able to get to my bank. And I believe her. I hope she's real too, quite frankly, because uh, I think I think I'd enjoy being with her. Let me put it that way. I'm glad that you guys can talk to him because you're obviously way more objective than I'm going to be because he doesn't realize all the turmoil he's caused in our family. I mean, obviously I've completely lost all trust in him. He's lying to everybody. Like the places where he has money, he'll tell them that he's taking out money so that he can buy a Porsche. Um, my dad has a, a, a vintage 1971 Porsche 
and you know it's his like pride and joy and i've subscribed to all these services that will tell me when one comes up for sale i keep on getting these emails and one time i'm going to pull it up and i'm going to see that his car is for sale i mean he'll he'll do anything at all that these people tell him to do brie and i finally sat down with alan for the first time and this is how it went what's up alan nice to meet you i'm drew nice meeting you and i'm brie okay brie yep nice meeting you so Alan, your son reached out to us about Lisa and we have a team of researchers. You haven't met her in person yet and we want to help you out. I mean, I know who she is. I've, I've talked to her. I've seen pictures of her and she's responded to me a number of times. So, so you have no doubt. I have no doubt. Are you sure? I am sure. Yeah. You don't think it's worth us just checking into it a little bit? Well, I'm, I'll tell you up front, I'm not going to give you all the information you've asked for on the, on your on this questionnaire thing. I mean, I'll give you some of it, but I'm not going to give you all of it. Anything you have, we can look into. Okay. So what about this? If we can verify her as a real person, we can figure out how to get her the $40,000. But you have to open up to us. I'll give you as much as I, as I can, uh, <clears throat> but we can go ahead if you want to. The only thing, Alan, is you have to have an open mind when we present all of this to you. There's millions of people who are going through the same thing that you're going through with Lisa. She's telling you she's stuck overseas, locked out of her bank account. We hear this story every day. Okay. We'll wait for you to send whatever you're comfortable with sending over to us, and we'll start searching. I mean, there's, there's some things I'm not going to tell you, okay? I'll, I'll be right up front with you. In order for me to do my job, I will need as much information as I can to get started. You can go through your questionnaire and I'll, I mean, I didn't have to show you this stuff to start with. I'll, I'll just go through the questionnaire. We'll get, we'll get where we get from that. And then I, I'll, I'll be happy to show you this stuff and you can take a picture of it if you want to over the, uh, off the, off the computer, but I'm not going to physically send it to you. No. What would it take for us to prove to you that you're being lied to? Well, uh, prove it. She's lied to me about her origin, where she lived. Okay, so we got a deal. You're going to send everything over to us, and we'll get back to you. Okay. All right, Seekers. We did end up cutting a deal with Alan, and we needed to deliver. Up until this point, he had sent over $300,000 to Lisa, and his son Sean was afraid that his next move was selling his Porsche so Lisa could get all of her furniture back to the United States. Alan did eventually get comfortable enough to send us information on Lisa so we could start to debunk some of the stories that she was telling him. Everybody around him that has a brain has told him that this is fake and this is a scam and these are the reasons why. I mean, it's just seriously, it's just, the, I've seen the emails, the prurient emails that he's getting and text messages, and it's just like, I think this is a case where no matter what, he's not gonna believe it. Before our team arrived in Kansas City, the tension between Sean and his father built up and led to an argument. Me and my dad got into a, a, a yelling match, like <laughs> F you to each other in the family room, and he's like, you know, you're gonna listen to me, I pushed him down in the chair, right? He unfortunately hit his head, Right, which was obviously not intended. Felt horrible. Apologized to him. Whatever. So now the the scammers played up on him. Well, your son assaulted you. You need to report him to the police. Right? Yeah. So I pushed him down in a chair, and that sucks. And you know, whatever. But you know, they just then obviously took up on that and totally played up on it. We see this in almost every case. The scammer's goal is to leverage anything to lure the victim away from family or friends. This can include making statements that the family is trying to keep them from meeting them in person or keeping them apart. In this case, the scammer used their altercation to isolate Allen. It was just clear the other day, unsubstantiated, you know, from the state of Kansas, but fuck man, it's cost so two much attorneys. Stress, huh? Yeah, he knows that it was an accident. He knows that it was not intentional and that, you know, I didn't mean to harm my dad. But they played up on that and, you know, had to go through all that. Hire an attorney to defend myself in that front. It's ridiculous. Say if, you know, he finally understands this, like, what would it take to get things back to normal? We well, need to go to family counseling, for sure, and straighten out some stuff, obviously. I may not like my dad right now, but I love my dad. Yeah. 
the goal is to allow us to do an IP tracker, get the actual mm -hmm. location, hopefully get them to trust the camera. Yeah. yeah. And then um, what we want to do too is afterwards bring you in if you're available okay. to, to talk to them. So, okay. After the conversation with Sean, our team drove over to Alan's house to meet him for the first time. Hey, Alan. Hey, I'm I'm David. Yeah. With Social Catfish. How are you? Okay. Okay. Is is now still a good time? Yeah, yeah, you can come yeah. in. We were confident that we had all of the information we needed to get Alan to understand that this profile he had been speaking to was lying about everything. So I, I want to tell you something. Okay. So we've been doing this for a long time. We've come and helped out families like many, many times. I want you to know that like we understand like where you're coming from. You're a grown man, you've been on your own for a long time, you, you've been married, you're at the point where you're lonely and you wanna make your own decisions, you know? You don't want other people getting involved, you don't right. want people telling you what to do because you've managed your entire life on your own, your entire life, you know? Right. You have your assets, you have your cars, you have your hobbies, you have your friends, you have your family that you built. So like, I want you to know, like I truly understand, like Art and I truly understand like where you're coming from. People make their own decisions, people make their own choices, we just want to, um, we just want to hear you and we want to supply you with our experience. Yeah, she thinks that she can sell this stuff that she bought over there for four million for somewhere in the neighborhood of $10 million here. I've seen her bank accounts. She gave me her, her password or whatever it was, you know. I don't know she's got over two and a half million dollars in that. I need to get her to be able to get out of there to prove that she's real and she's, you know, legitimate. It's a lot of money to prove somebody's real. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we're not here to judge, or, right. but I'm just being like... I can mean, afford it, let me put it that way. So can I, but doesn't mean that I yeah, spend... Uh, no, I, I understand, I understand. Yeah. I don't, don't uh, enjoy, you know, spending money where I don't need to spend money. Yeah. We're not on, on, on your son's side, we're not on your side. We're absolutely independent. We actually, as a matter of fact, this is your business, this is your money, we have nothing to do with it. Right. We come being a third party that has no interest with anybody. We do our investigation, we show the evidence. Right. That's who we are. I've got a friend from my hometown. I've asked him about $40,000, if I could, you know, borrow $40,000 because I couldn't get to mine because... Right. right, you're gonna get your hands on money that you have, right? If he would give her $40,000, she would get back to him with 40500 I said, well, how soon would you get the money to him? And she said, within a week or two. Alan was willing to do anything to see Lisa in person and get the rest of her furniture to the United States. We had to stop this and wake him up. We're gonna lay all the cards for you and you make a decision. So we have this technology that we built right. called an image search. And basically, you pop, we plop in an image. We have Bree, who's an investigator, Brianne, who's an investigator. Right. They do a little magic behind the scenes and they're able to locate people in the image. So Lisa Reese Johnson right here. And then if you look right here, this is the exact same person. Matching, right? They look identical, right? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Identical eyes, nose, the smile's the same, even the hair, the hairline, everything's the same, right? This is her LinkedIn account, right? So this is her business account. She lives in... She's married. And then she has a son. And so usually what we do, like when we look and see if somebody's real or fake, we see like all the history behind everything. So if you go through the Facebook page, I mean, we're talking tons and tons and tons of pictures, goes back years and years and years. And this is a picture of her and her son. In fact, all the pictures that you have, we can probably find them from her Facebook page. From her social media. Yeah, her social media. This woman in these images has nothing to do with this scam. Her photos and likeness were used to dupe Alan out of money. She has her own life and has other fake profiles on the internet. 
Alan's wheels were finally turning when we showed him the real woman's official profiles. Are, are you saying that she is now in the United States and she's not in? She never left America. This is not the same person. It's not the same person. So it's somebody with a completely different name. She has a family, she's married, she have a kid, and there is somebody who probably don't even, don't live in Malaysia, probably from a different country, pretending to be someone to get interest from you. And unfortunately, that interest is money. And on the stuff we didn't show you, all the fake contracts. So we found the signatures in here. So these signatures are used in other fake contract scams across the internet, exact same signatures. And so they just go, they use an app like Photoshop or you know, there's apps on their phone and then they put the stuff on documents. They go and they type the stuff up so it looks official, but it's not. This is your passport, her passport, okay? This is her passport. You recognize this actor? You recognize this face? Maybe you saw him in the movies, maybe... Uh, yeah. What's his name? Yeah. Johnny Depp. Johnny, Johnny Depp, Depp, right. Yeah. So this is the same software that scammers use, and look at this. This is Lisa, and this is Johnny Depp. And look at the passport number. It's kind of hard to see, but that passport number right there mm -hmm. is the same passport number that's in this one. So this oh, yeah. image of the gems in the container, but this is an image that's found all over the internet. It's a stock image. A stock image, it's an it's a, it's a image that you can get, you can Google it, go online, take the picture. If she sends you this picture, we found exactly the same picture on the internet. Exactly identical picture. Both of them are identical. Every photo, document, and story this person behind this profile, Lisa told Alan, was completely false. This is not a way to spend your life saving money. If you want to go freaking to casino and blow 300,000 and put everything on red, you know what? You go and you experience it. You have cocktail right, waitresses. I'm going to be sure screaming and yelling, red, 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 yeah. go, go, go. That's going to be the best night of your life. If you fucking lose on red and it became black, guess what? You got back home and says like, you call all your friends from school and said, guys, I just blow $300,000 on red, but I have so much fun. At least this is real. You haven't met that person and you already bought a house to a fucking person that you never met in your life and you never FaceTime. Alan. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Cause she had, she's asked me to get her some vanilla gift cards. $50. Yeah, it's very common. It's what she can do with vanilla gift cards? $50, I don't know what exactly. It's, you know, it's not going to, it's not a big deal. 50 bucks is not a big deal. $333,000. Yeah. Yeah. And it adds up. The first few thousand dollars wasn't a big deal. The second few thousand dollars wasn't a big deal. The third few thousand dollars wasn't a big deal. And now you're sitting at $330,000. Hey guys, I got a click on the <sighs> tracker. No f***ing way. Where? Yeah. It says, um, Chicago. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It, what, who's the <sighs> internet service provider? Safari, mobile, iPhone. Unfortunately, the person behind this profile was using a VPN. We had to come up with another game plan to figure out where Alan's money was going. A few minutes later, Sean showed up. We were about to attempt to patch up some of their relationship. We felt it was the perfect time because Alan seemed to be coming around to Lisa being a scammer. Your son's here. Oh. Hey, Sean. Hey. We had conversation um, early, nine in the morning with your son. And, and I want to say, like, I know your relationship is tense. Like, I know. But one thing that he said that was touching for me, and I want you to hear this. You know, I mean, it'd be nice if we could get to, to the point of realization of what it's done to his family. You know, um, and again, he just thinks that his behavior has no impact on the people around him for some reason. Um, and like I said, my father was a person that I looked up to, I trusted. He was always an honest person, taught me to be an honest person. And he lies about everything now. There is a long conversation, but the moral of the story is, while you're chasing this fairy tale that you created in your head, your whole fucking family is suffering. I personally, I don't have kids yet, but I'm gonna pray to everybody in my life to have son like this, who no matter what, he can be mad at you, he can be angry, he can say 
shit, but he so deeply loves you. He doesn't want you to not be happy, you know? He just wants you to be, you know, responsible with how you're doing things. He loves you so much. This is like hurting him. And like in 99% of these cases we deal with, the family disowns the person that, like in your case. Family usually gives up, like so many cases, family is like, you know what? This is his problem, let him deal with it. If he's whatever, stupid, or if he don't want to talk to us, that is his problem. I know your wife is not here, but she's looking above and she's proud of family that you both created. And you have kids and you have amazing grandkids. And that money, it's your money, do whatever you want. But I'm pretty sure that your grandkids will be happy to go on vacation to Disneyland for that money that right now somebody is spending. This is all your life, but this person had, have, and will have your back, regardless of your behavior. Unfortunately, and it was a while ago, I was physically attacked by him. And I know he didn't mean to, to hurt me or anything, but I think he cracked a rib. And it's over, it's past. Um, and he was, you know, basically saying, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're chasing a ghost, basically, and whatever, but um, I didn't really appreciate getting physically attacked because of it. Although the charges were dropped by the district attorney, Sean and Alan are still struggling to move past the rippling effect that this scam has had on their family. Just trying to protect my father and his assets and him. You don't budget, you don't budget for an amount that you're going to be scammed out of. You don't do that. Did you go to Sarah's wedding? No. And you didn't go to the wedding either. You didn't see Irene because the family didn't want you there because of this. That's the only reason. Kelly didn't want you to disrupt her wedding, your granddaughter's wedding, all caused by this ghost. I wasn't gonna disrupt any wedding, but anyway. Yeah, you missed Irene coming over from Germany. Yeah, I didn't want to go because I didn't want there to be some, you know, scene in front of Sarah and her wedding. It's her wedding, for God's sake, not family drama. And I wouldn't have been any family drama because there was nobody but besides me it was going, so. Anyway, that's water over the dam, so. Yeah, but it's real shit. Sarah only gets married once. Irene doesn't come over to the United States every freaking month. She hasn't been over here in years, and you denied yourself your ability to see her because of this. Sean, please. Okay. No, no, it's the truth. You don't like to face that. It's not whatever. I, I think like, he, here's my take on this, right? Like, it sounds like there's a lot going on, a lot of history, right? A lot of frustration on both your guys' end. I'm not a psycho psychiatrist, Art's not a psychologist. If you can go to counseling and get the stuff out on the table in a productive way, you guys can move on. Because like, you obviously care about each other. I've heard both things from you guys, but then you guys get together and it's like oil and water, right? May I ask, um, just being a sentimental on these bromance that are happening between son and, and dad, I wish I ever had a, a chance to hug my, my dad. Is it too much to ask for you to shake a hand or give each other a hug? No. Please. You know I love you, Dad. I love you too, son. All right? I'm trying to protect you, okay? I understand. All right? Yeah. You know I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Just don't attack me again, please. Well, you know, I didn't mean to. You know, I, I didn't know. mean I... for you to hit your head. Well, it wasn't my head. It was my rib I cracked. Okay. I didn't mean for that to happen. I know, I know. You know that. I know. So. It's pretty hard when we're both telling each other to f off, you know? Things get a little heated. Yeah. Okay. I know some stuff about some stuff, you know? I'm only trying to help you. Okay. I always wanted you to be happy. I've always supported the women that you've dated. I, I want you to have relationships. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. You know I want that yeah. for you. Yeah. You you just threw away six months of your life. Well, I'm gonna make up for it. She's still around. Next six yeah, months. the yeah, next, next, next six months. Holiday season is around. There is a Thanksgiving, there is um, Christmas. It's a lot of beautiful memories that you guys are gonna create together with grandkids. Now I'm anxious to see Addie and Melissa. Yeah. Um, you know, they want to obviously see you, too. So... Not okay. Gonna, not going to beat you over the head with it, okay? okay. We, we've known from day one what's been going on with this. Okay? Okay, well, I'm going to have to get to church here not too long and get your pulled pork and stuff for tonight, so... But I'll bring it by and drop it off. Yep, all right. Sounds good. And we've got some stuff coming up down at the museum. If, if you want to come to it, you know, they got friends and family type thing coming up, that type of thing. That will be amazing. Okay. We, um... Thank you all. Thank, thank you both for uh, yes. letting us in your lives, letting us in your house. I know we're strangers, but we want the best. We have best interests for both of you. And I gonna go and I'm gonna shake those cash mules who accept your money and trust me. You know, you know, God bless America. There are ways that I'm not allowed to do in America that I would shook differently those cash mules who accepted your money. I will do different techniques, but I can't. You know, I'm good American citizenship. Yeah, hi. Seekers, I know you see how much time is left in this video. And that's because it's not over. Our next move was to track down where Alan's money was going. Alan ended up opening up more about where he was sending money to Art and David, and it helped us pinpoint a man named Evan. Evan is a man that was receiving money on behalf of this fake profile of Lisa, but why was he receiving it? We needed to get to the bottom of this. And before we go any further, if you like this video and you wanna see more of this type of content, it really helps if you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for making it this far through. We have way more to unravel. We'll knock on some doors to find out who Evan is. If you move your head from side to side, you can see the there's a light on inside right now. And figure out why he was receiving these payments from Alan. No, I haven't seen him for a long time. Like, it's actually been pretty quiet over there. Recording? Yeah, yeah. And lastly, we'll have a conversation with Evan. Hey, Dave, this is Evan. Just calling to find out uh, what's going on. Give me a call. Bye. After our team packed up and left from Alan's house, we decided to do some research. So this is the guy that had been receiving funds from Alan. And what I found out was, is that he's 64 years old. He lives in Northern California. He owns a couple businesses. So one of the companies is actually like an inspection company, it has a phone number, an email, uh, looks like a little duplex here on Yelp. Let's go see if we can find Evan. With just the bank transfers, Brienne was able to pull Evan's whereabouts through a name search. We hopped on the first flight to Sacramento to see if we could find him. Let's see what we can dig up. We had a huge problem. We had the area of where Evan could possibly be, but not a specific address. Apparently, Evan owned all of these homes in this area. Our only hope was to knock on some doors and try to get some information out of his tenants. Some people were helpful, some were concerned, and others told us to kick rocks. Why is he filming me? Anybody? Yeah. Stop filming my damn camera. Sorry, we'll get out of your way. So we went, no answer first door, no answer second door. And then um, right when she's closing the door, the other guy like shows up to the, the initial door that we walked up yeah. to. So Evan's son lives there with that guy. Yeah, and, and it looks like it's all their properties that they're renting to people. Yeah. So he's like, well, he lives and he lives at that address and that's it's his a home and a business. Yeah, so we're gonna go there now. Hey boys, quick question. We are um, looking for Evan. He lives over here, 714, and there is Doug's business. Do you know if they open because for some reason the main door is closed? Um, you know what? I haven't seen his truck lately, so I don't know if he's been open lately. Um, because he usually, Evan usually parks back here, yeah, so. Because we came yesterday, nobody was home. 
we came today. No, I haven't seen him for a long time. Like, it's actually been pretty quiet over there. No, yeah, thank you. Appreciate right, it. Cool. He spelt, I felt like he was kind of brushing this off. Yeah. Bit, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sean? Yeah. Hey, this is David McLeod with Social Catfish. How are you? I'm good. How are you, man? Good, good. So, there is a guy who's 65 years old. He lives in Sacramento. And we went yesterday to his house. He didn't open the door. But they do have a business. And looks like his son ran the business. Is it that house right there? No, it's here on the right. The team drove around for a while and we found Evan's office. It appeared to be open, but no one answered the door. If you move your head from side to side, you can see the there's a light on inside right now. And but so the, the blinds are all the way closed. That's actually so f bizarre. It says open, but it's not open. The door is closed. Unless, you know, he's afraid. We circled Evan's office and found out that he had a house in the back. Evan? Mr. Evan? Hello? But once again, no luck. No one answered the door. David began to look at some of the photos on Evan's Instagram page and noticed an old post with the same truck that was on the scene. That's so fucking shady, dude. Thank you for calling more service. We're not available at this time. You can hide, but pff, you can't hide from us. We're still gonna find you. Just doesn't make sense. Like, they hiding from us. And the door yesterday, like, was locked, yeah. right? So today it was open. So, yeah. like, somebody's been in and out of the oh, house. Oh, yeah. No, no. He's or is in the house. We didn't have much luck finding Evan in Sacramento, and the team was feeling defeated. So we decided to head back home. We wondered if we ever hear from Evan, and a few days later, David received a mysterious call from a number he didn't recognize. Hey, Dave, this is Evan. Just calling to find out uh, what's going on. Give me a call. Bye. You recording? Yeah, yeah. All right, can we get a camera and a mic? Here we go. Hello? Evan! I, we, I know, we made a little noise in Sacramento. The next day, Evan agreed to hop on a video call with us. Sorry for the noise that we made in your neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my tenant was a little worried and he, he texted me, he said, what's going on, Evan? It's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, we, we, again, we, we knew that you were in trouble. We would try to knock on so many doors and, um, you know, and unfortunately from all days that we flew, we came on Sunday, Monday, and you were out of town until Tuesday. So it's just, we miss you by, by an inch. After we apologized for making all of that ruckus in Evan's neighborhood, he opened up to us about his internet relationship. When we first started talking, we were talking uh, via um, texting. Mm. Then he said all of a sudden, hey, can you switch over to Gchat and we'll talk that way. Us speaking to Evan and him being so open to sharing more information about his internet relationship opened up a spider web of other money mules and possible romance scam victims. And so the goal with this is to find the 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 big fish, right? The guy who's taking money from everybody because you had sent, you know, $135,000, but there's over a million dollars that's been sent in total, right? You, you've sent us the information of the people you've sent money to. We're going to reach out to them, see if there's any different information that leads to anybody else. Because these scammers, they use a lot of the same things over and over, phone numbers, you know, email addresses, different things. They leave little breadcrumbs across the internet. And so we're going to try to trace those breadcrumbs down. Our next move is to contact all of these people who accepted Evan's money and try to get more information on the people behind these fake profiles. We'll be diligent with this, Evan. And so, um, like, I'll get you the tracker um, later today. And so if you could just send me a, uh, a text once you send it over to this person, and then I'll be watching it. And as soon as they click on it, um, I'll let you know, okay? You know, believe it or not, you're the answer to my, to my prayers. I mean, I was just kind of like, something is totally wrong, totally wrong, you know, because I started going back on the whole thing, you know, because we first started talking and then she said, well, yeah, let's go to, to 
of the G chat and all that kind of stuff. And I says, well, how about if I call you, you know, directly? He says, oh, no, you can't call me because, you know, uh, Egypt has this rule. They don't take incoming calls. It's like, no, that's that's crazy. Same story. Oh, my God. Evan was able to send us over some of the photos and contracts he got from his woman that he was dating online in his scam. The real woman in these images has nothing to do with either of these scams. Her likeness and photos were stolen to dupe Evan out of money and to move Alan's money. Evan, uh, how long you been with this quote-unquote relationship with this lady? One year or less? Uh, since August of 22. Okay, August so, 22. So, come up on two years now. Wow. In two years. Thank you for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All of our new videos go out every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.